Hello and welcome to In Business. I'm your host Vikant Sahai. The tourist season is already peaking and it has peaked. And what we have seen is that whosoever lands in Goa, whether on holiday or on business, they look for two things. First is taxi from the airport, railway station, bus stand, wherever to go to the destination. And the destination happens to be a hotel in case they don't have any relatives out here in Goa. So we have an expert in the hotel industry and he's the area director of the Indian Hotel Company Limited, IHCL, which runs Taj group of hotels and other, uh, there are other uh, verticals also. So welcome Mr. Vincent Ramos to In Business. Thank you, Mr. Sai. Mr. Ramos, tell me uh, something about your uh, IHCL, what is and how big is this? First of all, thank you so much for having me on the show and to let you know IHCL is huge in Goa. Uh, we have all the brands possible which is in our portfolio. Uh, we have the Taj, uh, we have the Selection, uh, we have the Vivanta, we have the Gingers and we have the Taj sets. And now we have come up with a new brand called Ama Stays and Trails which we are doing extremely well uh, and we are going gung-ho on it and I think it's going great guns for us at the moment and these are luxury bungalows, Ama stays and trails, luxury bungalows where we can give the guests a Goan experience of how a Goan lives in a house. You have your own butlers, you have your own gardeners, you have your own security and they cook for you, they serve you and you can now relax in that atmosphere. So that's about our brand. So how many, how many hotels are there right in your, in your portfolio and how many rooms are there in Goa? So altogether I have 19, you know, so we have about 1,600 rooms altogether. Uh, uh, you have the Taj Holiday Village, you have the Fort Agwada Beach Resort, you have the Taj Exotica, you have the Vivanta Miramar, you have the Vivanta Panji, then you have Selection, which I spoke about, which is hand-picked properties called Siddhadi Goa, which have their own character. Then you have the Taj Resort and Convention Center. Then you have the Ginger Panaji, you have the Ginger Donna Paola, you have the Ginger Mudgaon. And then we have all these Ama bungalows. We have one in Sholim, one in Betul, one in Asagao, and all over the place. So I think uh, altogether we have 19 of them at the moment, and uh, we uh, are going to have even more bungalows, and we might even have more hotels as we go on. So which is the most sought after after uh, all these 19 uh, hotels so all are sought after everybody has their own character you know so uh, if you want to be like uh, in a nice air conditioned hotel with great scenic views is then this is the hotel if you want to be on the beach uh, right on the beach then you could be at Siddhadi Goa or Fort Agwada village if you want to be a little away because Exotica came in later after the CRZ which is about 500 meters away from the coastline but has a huge golf course in front of the uh, in between the hotel and the beach then it's Exotica so every every hotel has a different character there's nothing like this is a great hotel and that is not so great hotel all the hotels are great we are doing very well we have done very well in the uh, last season and I think uh, we are going to do extremely well in the future we are the market leaders at the moment so what is there in the pipeline now any new project coming up oh lots we have lots of gingers coming up uh, we have lots of amas uh, that we are going to sign up with the owners you, you know. have the demand for that of course we have the demand just to let you know you know uh, we just closed uh, the 31st of December, uh, in spite of the pandemic, I'm talking about three months are left for the financial year, month, uh, this thing, we have already crossed 100 crores profit. So, you know, and about 300 crores on revenue, so you can take 18% which goes to the government, you know, it's a huge amount of money. We give the government more than 100 crores every year, just as a Taj group of hotels. So I think uh, it's not only us, it's, it's, it's the beneficial for all the stakeholders. And I think uh, in this business, you need somebody to be there to make sure that somebody cares for the state. How are we going to survive otherwise? Because uh, the mining is not there. Uh, tourism is the only other uh, bread and butter. There's so many locals that are there, you know, that we need to help, whether it's the bread man, whether it's a musician, whether it's a milkman, you know, uh, who depend on us, uh, whether there are families who are, you know, the boys are working here directly, indirectly, the taxi drivers are, are dependent on us. You know, so every stakeholder, you know, we generate a lot of employment to a lot of people. Imagine there's these hotels were not there, then, you know, you know, the tourists would have come and where would they go? I mean, uh, you, the more the hotels, the more the taxes and, and, and the economy goes on, you know, and that's the, that's the ecosystem of tourism. So how was your experience during the last pandemic? I mean, I'm not talking about the, uh, you know, we are already 
you know, wondering whether the third wave will hit us. But I am talking about last, last pandemic. So, last pandemic was great again. You know, so last pandemic, I think people have a lot of fright. In spite of that, I had done 60 crores profit last year. How? We did profit by the business that we got. You know, so that's what the the sad part is that people underestimate tourism. Everybody blames tourism. The first the wave no sooner the wave hits, they say, oh, tourist ke liye ho gaya. You know, but I think uh, we have to be responsible. We need to have uh, social distancing. We need to wear masks. You know, we ourselves don't do it, and then you know everything you cannot blame on tourism. But you have to understand that you know it's not about me. You know, uh, people mistake us, you know, we wear good clothes and walk around in the hotels. No, it's not about that. It's not a glamorous life. We make livelihoods, you know, for so many families in Goa. Uh, and I think everybody needs money to live on. You know, they need they need careers. The students need some careers. Even we, we can train them here and they go abroad and they make their future. You know, a student in a college today, you know, how depressing it is probably for him because of the COVID. But if we shut shop, you know, where will these students go? They will get into depression. The suicide uh, cases will go up. There is there's a lot that we don't see because everybody just wants to point a finger at and say that, oh, abhi COVID ho gaya. You have to deal with COVID. You know, you have to be ready for COVID. You have to have the precautions. How responsible do you find your own customers when they uh, step in into your hotel? So, Yes, you get mixed customers, you know, you get uh, responsible and irresponsible customers, but we try to educate, you know, we make announcements to wear masks in the hotel, for example, we uh, make sure that they are, you know, uh, they're injected or vaccinated or whatever. And we, 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 time and again, we have to remind them, you know, so I think uh, there are some people who are very responsible who would, you know, not wear, uh, who will wear a mask all the time, and some who would, uh, you know, just think for, but if you tell them very nicely, I think they are very responsible. And how well trained are your staff for this, uh, after this pandemic? Very well trained. I would say very well trained because uh, when you say training, it comes, uh, you know, from within. I think uh, we as Indians don't need any training in hotels. It comes naturally to us, you know, hospitality, you know, to serve a cup of tea or to make some food. You know, I think uh, we as Indians, we are uh, way ahead of all the other nations. Uh, but we always take things for granted. You know, we, we think that, you know, uh, service, but you know, this, the best service is in India, you know, because the boy or the girl can speak good English and then he has this flair for service, which you and me have, like if a guest comes to your house, you know, or if when I was a small child also, if my uncle came to my house or some relatives, relatives came to my house, how excited we were. You don't see that in other countries. You have to probably take an appointment to meet them. But here, our, our, whole, uh, our whole nature is different, you know. So, you don't have to teach hospitality. It is within us, you know. When somebody comes, ye khao, wo khao, you know, uh, do this, why don't you try this, get him some water, make sure that your guests are comfortable. So, that's the best lessons for hospitality are, are in your homes, you know. The best lessons are taught by your mother. The best lessons are taught by your wife. Maybe how to cook the food, how to take care of your guests. And I think we score a 10 out of 10 on that. So, uh, during the pandemic, uh, there must be job losses also because of the closure. There were, so how there were, painful was it? Very painful. In the first wave, it was very painful. Second wave, less painful. And I think moving forward, it should be even less painful as we go forward. But I think that's the way of life now, you know, because uh, we didn't know what this pandemic had uh, plans for us. You know, all of us were very scared. We locked our rooms. We were inside for six months. The economy went down. You know, then we got a little confidence and then the second wave came. Then again, the whole thing happened, you know, but uh, you see these waves will happen, you know, but how we have to work around it. Okay, whether you have tourism or you don't have tourism, the wave will, hap wave will happen, yes. but we have to be responsible. You, your staff which had left uh, during the pandemic to their hometowns, have they come back? Yes, they have come back. Most of them are, are back on the, this thing. Uh, provided, it's a very, very minimum percentage that has probably not come back. You know, I would say very negligible to be this thing. But most of them are back. And hence we are doing, you see, we are doing better than what pro uh, the pre-pandemic times. I mean, uh, before the pandemic, we are doing better revenues. So, how, how you can get this revenue without the staff? You need to have the staff. So, we have the full staff. On this note, we take a short break. And after the break, we'll come back again and discuss with Mr. Vincent Ramos about the other sectors in the hotel industry. Please stay with us.
Welcome back viewers in In Business. I'm your host Vikan Sahai. We are discussing about the hotel industry with Mr. Vincent Ramos. Mr. Ramos, tell me, how do you compare Goa with other parts of the country as far as hotel industry is concerned? So when it comes to Goa, I think we are uh, leading the pack. You know, when I say leading the pack, see we have hotels as the IHCL or you know, the, as commonly known as Taj Group hotels all over the world. We have hotels in New York, we have hotels in San Francisco, we have hotels in South Africa, we have hotels in Africa, we have hotels in Maldives, we have hotels in Sri Lanka, we have hotels in Dubai, and not just one, many, like in Dubai we have three. We have hotels all over the world, and of course we, have, we are, you know, a dominant player in, in, uh, in our own country. You know, we have hotels at every nook and corner, whether they are the palaces or whether it's a hotel up in Jammu Kashmir, or whether it's a hotel down uh, in, in Kerala and in, in Chennai, we have hotels all over. So Goa is leading the pack. Now this might be a little unbelievable. You'll say that you know, boss, it's such a small state. You know, so we discuss this every morning meeting. You know, all the revenues. You know, so US because of whatever reasons, you know, they are had lockdowns and they did not f follow the vaccination. Probably I don't know what it is, but I think our our country did a great job on vaccination. And that's the reason why that you know we we took the benefit as a Goa also as a small state most of us are vaccinated. Then we had South Africa the wave the Omicron started there and you know so business went down. So everyone I think Goa was lucky is 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 blessed. You know my ancestor my parents also or my grandparents also told me that you know Goa is blessed nothing will happen. It's a land of Lord Parshuram. It's a land of where Saint Francis Xavier's body lie. You know and I think. Uh, people believe it or not, but that's the best part of it. And if you ask me this question, and you know, which you have just asked me, that where is Goa standing? Goa is standing number one. You know, so yesterday I, uh, you know, uh, in fact, on the second of Jan, I sent this message that we've crossed hundred crores. There was nobody close to it. You know, why hundred crores? You know, we've been profit because we have done that much of business. You know, such a small state. You know, and. It's just not uh, uh, us. We uh, it's the Marriotts, it's the Hyatts, and everybody in Goa has done uh, that much of business. The other places that in India that which we are doing business is Rajasthan, of course, uh, uh, the little temple town uh, in Ch in Chennai, you know, in uh, on the on the on the bay side. Uh, apart from that, the hill stations did a little bit of business during the summers. But apart from that, uh, I think uh, we were the lucky ones, you know. So you have uh, uh, cities which are doing uh, okay, but not as good and not as uh, uh, vibrant as Goa. So Goa is is really really something. It's a story. It's it's Goa is a destination on its own, and I think there's a lot of hard work. There's a lot of work that the government did for us also you know we are very happy that you know the government supported us in both the lockdowns you know and to open up uh, the 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 market so that we could accommodate the guests so i think goa leads the pack and goa has done extremely well on this front do you think that uh, goa being a tourist destination was sought after by the uh, those people who are locked up in their home for yes. quite some time yes. so they wanted to come out and then, then uh, splash out Yes. And, and enjoy themselves here. Yes. So, you know, the first wave, everybody wanted to do work from home, so they chose Goa to do work from home. Many of them came to Goa and they took their houses in Asagao and all parts of Goa and they started work from home. And they started loving Goa. You know, people who were probably have never been to Goa have been to Goa this year. You know, the, the, you were just in news, I think it was your newspaper which came up that 102 flights departed on Sunday from Goa. So that's the that's the beauty, that's the potential that Goa has, you know. People love Goa, people love the cuisine of Goa, people love the beaches of Goa, people love the, uh, the uh, uh, you know, the people of Goa, the beaches, everything. I mean, the whole ecosystem, the people love it. You so, know, so. so work from home happened from, my, from your hotel as well? Work from home happened from our hotels, from our AMA stays, and uh, a lot of them, you know, people took uh, rooms for months together. And uh, with this, we had a lot of learning. We made sure that, you know, the Wi-Fi is now better, higher, which was never on focus. Wherever you go, you, you could get Wi-Fi. And what better to do work from home when you can see a uh, sea see outside your house or a coconut tree outside your house full of nature, where normally you're locked out in offices, you know, which uh, just have four walls and then you need to take a break. This was like 
people started enjoying it and people have start moving business to goa you know people have started open their offices travel agents and things like that they said oh wow this is we never thought of this so covid has taught us a lot of things you know covid has taught us how to reinvent ourselves covid has put a lot of discipline in ourselves so i think uh, we are well on 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 that front what is the biggest learning from the hotel industry uh, for the hotel industry during covid the biggest learning is self discipline uh, i think that was the biggest learning and you know simple things like washing of hands maintaining social distance you know things that we took for granted you know thing uh, one of the biggest take was that the extra services that we used to give you know we used to if there are two people sitting on a table you would move around but just to put the food there and just leave everybody alone that also give you a little peace to talk to each other so a lot of great learnings you know we used to uh, uh, probably visit the room many times so we said okay fine we will do away with the turn down service you know so that we don't we came something which which we said a uh, contactless service you know so we don't want to come in contact you know so uh, i think the guest also got his privacy and i think uh, we have uh, evolved ourselves you know and i think it's a new way of looking at things now so the hotel industry is much better on uh, on on that front you know uh, i think a lot has been disciplined uh, in processes in 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 the people and i think it's here to stay so it's a new normal as they call it uh well uh, we thought that covid-19 was the only virus but uh, now we have a new variant called omicron and it is uh, doing quite of uh, you know rising at a very brisk pace and i mean this is a concern for everyone in in india as well so how do you see that if if this wave also turns out to be a uh, quite a you know uh, heavy then how do you handle this situation So I think we have an experience of two waves already, and that's the best part of it. You know, so uh, it is nothing new. Uh, I think we are going to go back to the same, and we are going to make sure we enforce on every people the the social distancing, wearing of masks, uh, the contactless service that we are following. You know, so I think we are well prepared for this. You know, I know that this wave will come. Yes. Uh, you can see it you can see it on the news that a lot of cases but we have to be ready for it we cannot avoid it you know the best thing is to be ready for it and to tackle it that we have done it in the past uh, you cannot say that you know uh, uh, i i can avoid this no it will come to you it will come to you but is how you handle it how you tackle it and how prepared you are and i think we are well prepared you know uh, i think uh, the experience that we got from the last two waves is humongous you know the first wave had is different ex- experience the second wave had a different experience and the third wave is is coming or is come and it's it's it has his own way of things maybe it will throw out new things but i think we are well prepared and so is the infrastructure of all the all the hotels you know we have uh, we isolate people if they have the covid disease so we put them in separate rooms we have got special rooms so uh, we have co- uh, you know coaches that we discontinue so that people don't move in coaches we uh, we encourage people to come separately you know so everything so we have a whole process there are sops for this you know so whether it's in the cafeteria uh, people don't sit in group so we we make sure that we look after our employees uh, we have covid kits now in in the hotel you know where you can take a test so we are well well prepared we have a doctor uh, in the hotel who you can uh, approach and see your temperatures we check everybody's temperatures and things like that all so your staff and all our customers. staff yeah yeah all our staff and customers so so we are well prepared we disinfect the luggage uh, we disinfect the rooms so i think there's uh, i think this was not there you know 2 years back so we are doing this now and i think it is here to stay so how much extra expenditure was there on this uh, setting up these innovations and these uh, technologies to fight the virus and 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 keep people safe not much actually not much we see we every year we have a capex a uh, budget for capex and i think we did it within that budget for the capex it depends on you know Uh, it's one percent or two percent of of your total revenue, and it was not much. But uh, most of the things which are there is is there permanently now. You know whether it's uh, a machine to disinfect or or whatever that we have done uh, uh, for for uh, for the rooms or for for the public areas. I think it was not much, very negligible amount. Uh, so uh, I think we are good on. That. So do your customers adhere to your request? Oh yes, they have to. Uh, they have to adhere to our request. Yes, there are some customers who might not, but then we explain to them it's for the benefit of their own health and for the health of the others, and you have to respect it when you're in the public places. Uh, but uh, we do our best, you know. But 
most of them i would say 99.99% respect what we uh, you know respect there could be one guy who's just you know like you have you know my body my right i will do what i want and all that but it is not to come to india as that as much as you have abroad so i think we are good on that and people if you tell them nicely they listen to you nicely but uh, i'm quite confident today you know that we will get over this uh, and we will uh, you know be number one whenever you know after the covid also will be number one because uh, we have done so much of research and so much of learnings that we are here to carry it forward my last question has two parts one that uh, how many rooms do we have in goa uh, apart from your your own hotel group of hotels or hotels number of hotels about 3500 or 2500 hotels are there and and uh, you can explain to me better and how how many were actually uh, you know occupied during this uh, season see sadly in goa there is something called the organized sector and unorganized sector now if you see that the number of tourists that come into goa and the number of rooms do not match up you know so uh, i know and i won't be able to tell you the organized sector rooms also because I, I, you know i've lost track of it but i know a lot of rooms which are in the unorganized sector i know people who have not applied to the tourism saying that this is my house and you know so a lot of a uh, lot of the rooms are not even there in the thing people they are not counted and they are a big number you know they are they, they are a huge number so whatever answer i give you will not be right you know whether i put a figure to it is say whatever say 30000 it won't be right because there'll be probably another 20000 which is not in the, uh, there and it is in an organized sector so to answer your question i think i will not have the answer for this but uh, yes we have lots of rooms in goa i would say but uh, there is no figure put to it because of this and i think it, there will come a stage where everything will get organized you know, in the in the sector and we'll probably one day have the right amount or the right numbers of rooms that we can say confidently that these are the number of rooms that we have in goa but what was your occupancy rate in ihcl we our occupancy rate was 90% and hence we did such revenues i'm talking about average occupancy rate so uh, in all our hotels in all your yeah hotels, and yeah 19 properties 90% okay. yeah that's huge yeah. you know on a, in a normal year you would do 72% 75% 90% is huge for a, a very unusual year tell me something more about that home stay which you have just launched and uh, yes so the amas yeah, it's a beautiful concept uh, and a lot of brands are now following it you know i think um, it's that experience that you want to give a guest you know that uh, Uh, you come to a goan house you know in in the olden days there used to be a house of a badkar in goa and you would have this uh, people walking in the house bare feet serving them there'll be a ranpin who'll cook the food you know and then there'll be a mess who'll cook the food also and serve the food to you the same person would go and water the gardens and uh, you know uh, pluck the coconut uh, coconuts and do everything so that's the experience that we want to bring to the people uh, or to our guests you know uh, uh, saying that this is Uh, how the goans lived in the past you know in a house which has had four bedrooms and then you have have a sal which is the common uh, hall and then you would have the mez the dining table and the banks and you know so th- those are the memories and those are the things that we have brought back uh, you know the old world the old charm of goa in these houses so you have built it or you have rented no we have we have acquired the old houses you know they'll have a typical balkan and then they have a sope sope is where you sit and in the old good old days people would uh, from the villages would sit there and they would gossip uh, on those things or talk about the the village and things like that and have their uh, siesta susegad so it it's a concept this is a concept that is which is which is, which is very unique you know and i think it's 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 fantastic and you must try it and you must experience it so how many people are actually going for that everybody goes for that most of the people go for that so today if you see that it is uh, they call it a family moon instead of the honeymoon family moon is you travel with the whole family you now today people are traveling with their father mother wife and children and that's the type of clientele that people go for then there is another clientele four friends get together four young couples say that you know let's take a bungalow in goa you know all all of us let's go and stay there and have a good time there's a swimming pool so four four of them have their four bedrooms they all meet together on one dining table go out together you know or have a siesta together so it's different so people are using it different from there are people who have taken like work from home 
you know uh, which is which is done very well you know and and some of our programs you know for our company our company came up with lots of the packages one of the packages that came uh, was 4d 4d was drive discover delight you know uh, 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 so it was it was it was a beautiful uh, this thing that you come with your car to the hotel and everything is taken uh, care of you know so it it is fantastic one of the package the second package was dekho uh, apna uh, desh you know so lots of packages that came up from a company that gave uh, the opportunity to all our guests you know so i think it was fantastic <laughs> on this note we have to come to the end of this program and uh, thank you very much mr ramos for giving the insight about the hotel industry especially in goa and how your ihcl has revved up the profit and doing wonders actually when we thought that in our times in in the covid times the profit was never in the sight many faced losses you faced and got a good profit thank you very much viewers i hope you enjoyed watching this program i am your host vikant sahai signing off